and learn from him. He knows what it takes to become a winner, and it's very similar to the training aspects that I use. After a while, you can only listen to your coach so much, and you know what it takes to make your body move through the water as fast as possible in the amount of training that's necessary. And he's mastered that. As they take off, remember that Kyle Gross is known for getting terrific starts. He got a fabulous start, for instance, in the relay the other night when he made up a full body length on Bruce Hayes in the first 10 meters of swimming. Now he has taken the lead over Morales next to him in lane three as they move toward the wall and the 50-meter mark. The Albatross, six feet, seven inches tall, with the wingspan, as we've mentioned, seven and a half feet. He can almost touch the lane rope, which are eight feet, two and a half inches apart. He touched in first place at 26-28. That's about 15 hundredths of a second over his world record pace of last summer. He has a tremendous dolphin kick. It's an illusion that his feet come out of the water extra high, but it's only because of the length of his body. He breathes every other stroke, but in the prelims, I noticed the last 40 meters, he started to breathe every stroke, and it seemed like he was struggling a little bit. He seems very smooth. Again, that's only an illusion because of his size. It's a flat wall turn. You must breathe and turn with your hands exactly parallel off of the wall. Otherwise, you'd be disqualified. Now, Gross is starting to pick up the pace, but at the 100-meter mark, he was still behind his world record pace, and Morales was very close to him as they came off the wall. Now it looks as though Gross is trying to put a little distance between himself, Morales, and Rafael Vidal in lane five. Those are the three who are in front right now and apparently headed toward medals in this event. Mikhail Gross gunning for his third gold medal of these games. Pablo Morales in the Olympic trials had a very fast last 50 meters. And if he wants to win this race, he's going to have to put on a push right now. Mikhail tied up in the prelims. He's starting to breathe every stroke right now. You can see that perfectly. Morales is still in composure right now, breathing every other stroke, and it seems like he's moved up. Gross, Gross looked at him. To his left. He he's worried. Cost him some time. Absolutely. Here comes the doll. Here comes Steven in lane six. This is going to be a horse race. He's Steven dying. is the leader right now. Gross is dying. Steven is about to pull a huge upset in lane six. 17-year-old John Stevens of Queensland, Australia, came on in the last 20 meters, and he caught Mikhail Gross and beat him to the wall. The silver medal will go to Gross. The bronze medal will go to Vidal. Pablo Morales was shut out of the medals. What a finishing performance for the men in lanes five and six. Rafael Vidal and, most of all, John Stevens. One of the most outstanding upsets in swimming for men at these Olympic Games. He was really hurting in the morning prelims. He was breathing every stroke then in the final 50 meters and, and tonight. Here we can see on the super slow motion, above at the top of the screen is American Pablo Morales. At this point in time, Mikhail Gross of West Germany was in the lead. But on the bottom of the screen was John Sieben of Australia, who in the last final 10 meters put his head down had a tremendous dolphin kick there and drove to the wall right here. The inexperienced swimmer may have taken a short, choppy stroke, but he pushes right into the finish for the first place. And by one one hundredth of a second, I have just noticed John Sieben broke the world record. He broke Mikhail Gross's world record. So I couldn't have been more wrong in saying that we should see another world record from Gross. Instead, we got it from a relative unknown.